What's up, everybody? It's easy. It's easy game. A little homemade intro. I think I'm addicted to playing the guitar. Been a while since I've made a video, so we're going to kind of break in slowly today. This is uh, the Evolution of Partners. Something that I'm sure everyone's noticed that the partner game has just been skyrocketing. They've been putting a lot of focus on the on the partners. We have the live duels, we have the regular ranked matches, we have the elite ranked matches, and we have the involvement with the partners in all of the attacks, which we'll talk about that a little bit, but I believe next video I'm going to make a video strictly on how the partners affect each one of the troops. I finally decided to join a couple of new servers. I got to join 532 and 533. I have a lot of people ask me how to fish, how the and how the relationship between the troops and the partners go. So I'm going to try to cover some of that next video. This video, we're going to have a bunch of featured partners, pretty much all the strongest partners in the game right now. First, kind of a little different than you'd expect, is the Blue Desert Prince. I don't think he's quite as strong as the green, but he does the, the Falcon Cry, which is the only thing that's different than the Green Prince. And that basically boosts all of your troops, which helps a lot, actually. Helps them take out the other side. It's Sometimes these little, alterca little alterations that you'll find in the different colors will help a lot. Even though Green Prince has three attacks, where Blue Prince has two attacks and one buff, so therefore the green may be stronger. Blue still helps in a lot of scenarios. Then you have others. You see here the red um, tusk. Big difference between red and green tusk. Green tusk probably the strongest, and I haven't really even seen blue in action yet. Or maybe I have blue, I don't know. <laughs> Been a while since we've got a video out. Had a real busy summer so far, even though summer's over, but if you lived in Atlanta like I do, you'd understand why I'm still calling it summer. It's about 95 out still. So a lot of things have changed. We used to all think the Blue Nomad was a top partner, and he's still what everyone else, that's the standard to go by. If you're better than the Blue Nomad, then you're an elite partner. But now that's the standard to go by, not the only elite. So interesting changes that have happened. There's a, I, I believe I put Blue Nomad ninth on my overall list, which I can't find. I don't know how, why I can make a list and can't find it 15 minutes later, but I can, it happens all the time. So, great team. This is MJ from server 3, 2, 3. Already got the... Now remember, we can we can 4th, 5th, and 6th awaken all the partners. You get to the 5th awakening, on, then they have bonus skills that happen automatically. I believe at the start of every attack, depending on what type of partner it is, you have human partners, you have dragons, you have the undead, you have all different kinds of partners. They all have different skills, so check those out. You'll see the little emblem on the partner page. Now this is a newer type of team that, well, n maybe not newer, but newer to be this popular. This is called the slow team. Instead of using speed on the left hand of all the partners, you have to use the green nomad. Green nomad king, what his, his passive skill is to slow everyone down, your team and theirs, to one under his speed. So if his speed is 100, you, remember, don't ever add any speed to, to green nomad. Uh, if his speed is 100, everyone else is 99. Unless they're already lower than 99, then they just stay where they're at. So Green Nomad gives you the ability to change how you build all the other partners on your team. So instead of having left hand speed or using cat and left hand speed, you can use Smilodon, for example, for, to boost your attack. And then on the left hand, you can also use attack percentage, hit point percentage, whatever your particular partner goes for or needs to, to, needs to succeed. Instead of having to put left hand speed on everything to try to compete with the, the speed of the other teams. You also see Blue Bape. I've got him 7th overall. It was really hard to pick out the top 10 too. It took me about 2 days. And about 50 erasers. Blue Bape, he has a, 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 I believe it's called Enduring Healing. So a good buff. He's got a good attack, but mainly he's got a counter attack. 
And I think it's he gets more counterattacks in than Red Nobat does. Now, off the top of my head, I can't remember how everyone's building them. They're, they may be putting Ian War Pattern on them. Don't forget your artifacts, too. I mean, th there's a lot of different factors involved with the partners now. And uh, as of right now, we have something else in the game. It's called Flamin'. You know, why it's cracks. It's <laughs> called Flamin'. I still don't have a hundred percent of an understanding of how it's going to completely interact but I know that they're going to give boost to different parts of your army and different parts of your partners we are now doing an event right now that's collecting all the stuff to build our flamen and yes you don't have to spend money on all of it I think that there's only one part that you have that they want you to buy I think they the the development team has, has really got the message that a lot of people were sending out there that they don't want to have to pay for everything and they've made sure that most of the events have free items as well. So good job with that. Alright, next is Green Tusk. He's got this team, I call it a super buff. He also has a great attack right here. Takes out you know, takes out uh, Red Ursa in my top three. You get some of these partners 5th and 6th Awakened and it's amazing, it is amazing the difference between 3rd Awakened and 5th Awakened. One of them is actually knocked out right now, the Red God Earth. And first overall on my list, probably most people's list, anyone that actually has them, is the Green Desert Prince. If you, if you use Sire War Pattern, you put high speed on his left hand. Now granted, here he is in a non-speed team. But you still want to have speed in his left hand. This is one of those partners you're going to use in more than one team. So left hand speed. And make sure you get his critical rate at about 100. I think I got 101. And it was a friggin' miracle I got up that high. I had to change everything around. So critical rate is really important to try to get his attacks at critical as much as possible. And he can disable the, the, the whole other team. The way uh, between, between his natural ability and Saya, he KOs pretty much every time. I also use Saya on the Green Nomad. I've had everything on him at one point or another. I thought Smiley Dawn was going to be the way to go with him. I thought Bull for a minute, but then Saya is what he, he reacts perfectly to. Yeah, here's a player from 284 Sponge. Sponge Cakes. Don't forget the last name. And they see Cha Cha's main attack. And I forget what it's called. Way to go on the information easy. She was kind of overlooked at first. I believe it was green that had every time she gets killed, she comes back to life. She takes 10% from everyone on the team. And it was it was kind of a new thing. It was amazing looking at first. But the weakness was that she actually took a single target attacker and turned her into a team attacker if they kept on killing her. Also, possibly part of an awesome team, the flower team, which we haven't got a video on that yet, but we will. But Blue is now part of the Elite Partners. She's got a really good buff, team buff, really good team attack. And then she's got that jumping at attack that she gets three to 4,000 damage every time. So strong attacker every time. Okay, two to 4,000. Then you have, you have uh, Ice Lord, Ice Lord. And here comes the music. I, you know, I can't ever get this right. I actually have to turn down all the background music when I'm recording because I get distracted like a four-year-old. <laughs> okay, artifacts. I wanted to mention this. I've seen a lot of... I've been against a lot of people in ranked matches that they don't have but one artifact. It's at level 12. It's one star. And the other three partners have no artifacts. You're putting yourself at a serious disadvantage if you don't invest the time and the effort and the partners. It takes four-star partners to get them. The two that they offer you um, easily. The book and uh, Thera's necklace. The, those are 15 four-stars you have to divert, you have to dedicate to those two. 15 four-stars. So you're going to have to do a lot of total rolling. Get a little luck. So keep in mind, to third awaken your partners. The fourth, fifth awaken them. You're going to have to have certain partners to help you with that. We now, they've changed the game a little bit. And they now offer that on the old ball smitty you can get. 
uh, much more of the partners that you need to especially the third awaken like the beast like the uh, archer girl those aren't the real names but that's what I call them this sponge cakes with a, with a nice win but a strong player best known for carrying his clan for months and months in a very good strong war against air airs of an elite multi uh, server clan and he pretty much single-handedly held them off for a while and his Vortmos from server 323 one of the finest tacticians that I've ever seen play he tells everyone that he is the most unlucky turtle spinner of the modern era so he's he's using the best of what he's got and you'd think that he there would be no complaining when you have two blue nomads but, but there's a lot of elite partners out there remember the elite partners you don't you can't just get by spinning golden turtles you have to wait for events to happen uh, if you've ever tried to spin off in these events you, you you might get it in the first spin or you might get it in the 500th spin so there's really a huge gap as far as when you might get one of the elite partners you might not get them at all I've spent I won't tell you how much I spent, but I spent a lot trying to go for the Green Prince the first time. I got lucky and got him on the second spin, the second event. So, a little luck involved. So, make the best of what you have. If you have any of the Nomads, they're all elite partners. They all can lead your team. Uh, if you have more than one blue, don't immediately feed the second blue Nomad to the first. Because having more than one blue Nomad on your team is beneficial. Also, you don't have to put attack on the blue nomad. You, you give him high hit point, high speed, and then resistance. A lot of people forget to put resistance on him. I have resistance in all but one of his war patterns, only because one of his war patterns I got was already purple and it was so good I, I just had to keep on using it. But you want to have resistance as well because if not, he he's one of those partners that even though he's really hard to kill with the right artifact on him he's really hard to kill but he can get knocked out pretty easily so you really want high resistance on him with the blue nomad you have the blue colonel they go hand in hand with each other perfect combination and here he has easily overtaken whoever this other person was appreciate everyone for watching we won't keep everyone too long this video about 12 minutes next video for real this time we got two rare four-star partners you have the football player mr. football and smiley Don. a lot of people don't use them but they both have some pretty unique abilities I'm gonna try to show you the pros and cons of next video maybe the video after I don't know <laughs> appreciate everyone for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't already till next time it's been easy take care everybody